Hey guys, today I want to go ahead and do my out-of-box review for the Master Grade Buster Gundam. So before we get into it, I just want to say thank you once again to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for hooking me up with this kit. Uh, kind of the reason that they did was because they wanted me to go ahead and make a video for them, uh, basically comparing a Bandai kit to a uh, bootleg or knockoff kit. So I compared this with the Daban version. If you want to see that video, you can check it out on their site a little bit later. Uh, but for us here on my channel, I just want to do a review of the Bandai kit. I'm not going to really talk about the Dabon kit at all. I'm not going to show it on my channel or anything like that because I don't want to uh, basically promote bootlegs. I think if you guys want to know how I feel about bootleg products or if you want to see a review of a bootleg product on my channel, I did do a review of the Dabon uh, Perfect Grade Astray. Uh, and that, once again, I only did just uh, basically for educational purposes for you guys, just so you know basically what to expect if you so choose to get a bootleg. I don't recommend or support getting bootlegs, uh, but I understand that some people do want to buy them. I think that's uh, totally up to you, but anyway... Totally off base with for this video uh, because we're here to take a look at the uh, kit in front of us here. So, uh, if you saw my unboxing, I mentioned that this is a kit that I have wanted for a long time, but I've just never really got around to getting it. So I was very very happy to finally be able to get my hands on it, and I have to say it did not disappoint at all. I am very very pleased with this kit. I really like it. And it just makes me really want to get the um, Master Grade Dual Gundam as well to go with this because I said in my unboxing video, um, of the five GAT suits, I think those are the two that I really, really want to have like standing next to each other, like as uh, sort of like a team with just the two of them because I think the two of them look so awesome just like standing there like that just next to each other. So I really want to put them together. So I'll have to uh, be sure to get that kit sometime in the near future here. Anyway, uh, it's not going anywhere. It'll be around. Eventually I'll pick one up. But this kit, uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of accessories because its main weapons are going to be the two huge guns that are strapped to its back. Uh, it doesn't really come with any other sort of handheld uh, weapons, rifles, pistols, anything like that. No beam sabers, anything like that. Uh, it does have some other weapons in terms of the missiles that are built into the shoulders. We'll talk about those shortly when we take a closer look at the kit itself. But basically, uh, I think the kit just looks really great. I think the color scheme, number one, is really unique and looks really good. That uh, kind of a little bit palish orange and then that dark green and that beige color mixed with the, the gray for the inner frame on the weapons. The, all of everything about those colors works so well together. And uh, as you can see, I did put a couple of the stickers on this kit. I usually don't put any of these marking stickers on there. You can see I just use a couple of these just because I used that for my comparison video I did. Um, it does also come with some dry transfers. I didn't put any of those on, but it does come with them if you want to use those. Uh, and then it has some foil stickers as well. All the foil stickers I put on, uh, including these ones inside the cameras on the sides of the shoulders, you can see as it comes around, there is supposed to be a clear piece in there, but I didn't put that in, so I've got those clear pieces here. Uh, I just stuck the sticker inside of there. You can do that. You're, I think if you want to use the sticker, you're supposed to stick the sticker onto the clear part, but uh, I wanted to save the clear part because after it's painted, then I'll put the clear part on last. So I've just got that set to the side for the moment. Otherwise, the few foil stickers that this has are basically going to be on the camera on the head, the eyes, and then a couple of the cameras on this gun here. I think this one, if I remember correctly, doesn't have any on there. Uh, just a couple on this one. So that's it. Pretty minimal in terms of the foil stickers. Uh, quite a lot of these if you want to use these. Um, if you don't, then of course you don't have to. But anyway, aside from all that, it is a master grade, so aside from just looking good, it's going to move very well as well because it's got a really, really great internal frame. I really enjoyed building the internal frame. I thought it's very, very nicely designed and it works really well and I, I like that it's uniform for the five uh, different GAT mobile suits or Gundams. That's pretty cool. And momentarily, when we take a closer look at the articulation, you'll see just how well it uh, moves. But I think more importantly for this kit, especially because it has to wield those huge giant guns, uh, the inner frame is very solid, and that's kind of the more important thing. That Aside from being able to move very well, it 
doesn't move when you don't want it to move and that's also uh, almost equally if not more important so it does uh, support the weight of holding those guns which we'll see when we put in a couple of action poses later on and it just supports the weight and holds up the mobile suit very well of course those gun those guns on the back do make it a little bit back heavy but really not all too much because they are actually connected onto the side skirt armor and that's I think where a lot of that weight is actually going to end up going so it's not really too bad uh, in terms of its balance but just the strength of the inner frame helps with that as well right so why don't we bring the kit up for a closer look and we'll take a look at some of the articulation most of the articulation is going to be exactly what you would expect for a master grade so I don't really want to go into it too much detail but there are a few points that I do want to point out um, the head just First of all, before we go into this, I want to ask you guys, has anyone else ever thought of the Buster Gundam to sort of look a little bit like a rabbit? Because for me, for some reason, I don't know, the head especially, I think, always makes me think that it sort of looks a little bit like a rabbit. Uh, and I don't know if, that, if I'm the only one that thinks that. Could be because the V-fin it's set a little bit off to the side, so I'm not sure if maybe that's why, or just sort of kind of the overall look of the face. I don't know, but something about it has always made it look sort of rabbit-like in my eyes, but I do really like it. It's definitely, um, from when I first watched Gundam Seed, it's definitely one of the Gundams that I liked the most, if not the most, either this one or the Blitz. I liked the Blitz quite a lot uh, when I first watched the series as well. Uh, anyway, uh, great articulation here in the head uh, for some nice upward movement there. Uh, very far down, no problems there. And just kind of normal head movement. The cockpit hatch, if I remember correctly, should open like whoop, this. Just popped off the front skirt armor, but that's okay. Just folds down. It's pretty simple. Uh, cockpit hatch mechanism. I think you can pull it kind of up and out a little bit like that. And the pilot figure is seated inside there. To put this down, you need to push that down and then that back in. Put this front skirt armor back on. There we go. Um, interestingly, this front square armor has two, a, a clear part with like these two little clear circles pointing out the front. I've never noticed that before on the Gundam until building this kit. So I just, I guess, never really noticed that. Uh, in the waist, it's got a little bit of forward and back movement there, but I'm afraid that moving it too much is going to uh, maybe damage or uh, just pop off the joint inside of there, but it is going to have some movement back and forth if you want to use that. Side to side, I think it's got a little bit there as well. Again, it's all, everything is pretty standard for a recent master grade, so I don't really want to spend too much time going over every single bit of movement. These uh, front parts of the shoulders open up, and we've got six missiles there on both sides, and those doors have no problem opening and closing, staying open if you want. And then these parts on the side of the shoulder move up and down. Uh, the shoulder is going to move independently. Uh, of course, the arm is going to rotate and has a nice double joint. So you've got some really nice movement there in the arm. I do like how the arms are really nice and bulky. We've got uh, quite a lot of bulk, especially to the lower arm. Um, it definitely suits the design of the Gundam, I think. The hands are these standard uh, hands that were the same for all these seed kits as well as the uh, wing kits where you just swap out the different fingers. I'll show you all of those um, when we're done with this bit. But that's the arms. The skirt armor is all just pretty standard uh, movement there. The side skirts, of course, are going to be a little bit limited because that's where we're plugging on this uh, arm that attaches onto the guns. Uh, legs as well are just going to rotate and nice double bend with um, some really nice knee separation there as you would expect. So that's pretty good. Uh, really nice looking movement there when we close that up and open that like that. Okay, so yeah, actually I had this problem on the uh, Daban kit as well, and it looks like it is going to be a problem you do want to be a little bit careful of. Here, this part inside of there, of course you just saw this whole front cap fall off, but then when I pressed it back on, uh, this part came apart. Uh, inside there is where these two parts kind of fit together. Uh, this part, and it's those parts can very easily come up separated like that and then you have to just kind of reattach them. So just be really careful with that part. I'm going to go ahead and just take a minute to reattach that now before I move on. Okay, so moving down into the ankles, we've just got some really nice movement here in the ankles, and the ankle armor is all just going to move pretty um, 
exactly how you would expect, I suppose. Uh, it's a pretty nice detail inside of there with some pistons and the toes are going to move a little bit, not a whole lot, only about that much down. If you wanted to do some aerial posing forward, it's going to be no problem at all, but down only about that much. So everything is looking pretty good. One thing that I just really like about it is just a lot of like the shape and design of the armor. I just really like a lot of the shapes that we've got going on here. This whole design of the chest looks really nice, especially with these gray parts here on the front. It's just a really nice look to help it make it look kind of more armored rather than just having like a typical vents there on the chest. Uh, all the shape here around on the sides of the legs. Uh, I like just the look of and shape of this armor going around here. On the back of the legs, these vents just kind of poking out there look really cool. Here on the backpack, this the design, the look of the backpack looks really, really cool, really unique. Uh, orange inside the thrusters, that's cool. Those are going to move up and down a little bit there. Oh, quite a lot, but uh, something like that. And just the overall kind of look and shape of the backpack is really cool and unique as well. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the guns as I reattach this front, spur front part that came off again. Uh, they're on these mechanical arms that's going to be hard to show you on camera without stuff coming off. But uh, they attach onto these pegs on the back. So if you can see here on the backpack, there's this peg. Uh, and then this part plugs into there. So when you want to just have them stored on the back, you can just plug that in like that. And it's going to hold them nice and securely onto the backpack. That's a really, really nice feature and definitely helps quite a bit. When you want to bring the guns forward, uh, they're just on this arm that comes out and has a lot of articulation there so you can move it around every which way you could possibly want on there and twist it and turn it and get it into basically every uh, different sort of pose you could possibly want I guess. Talking just about the individual guns for a moment, uh, here is basically how you want to, or how you can, I guess you can do it in any way that you want. Um, here is how you can move it if you want to just have like one of the guns out, one or the other. Uh, you don't need to fully extend the arm, you're just going to extend the back part or just kind of twist and turn the back part in a way so that it brings the gun sort of under the arm like this. And then each gun has a primary and secondary handle, so the primary handle is set to like the main part and then the secondary handle is going to be more in the front. Both handles can fold in and out and then they can also rotate up and down. And then both handles have a small peg inside there or kind of the female end for the peg for holding uh, the hands. So both of those uh, handles are molded in the exact same way, so they're going to work in the exact same way. It's just this back one has this, uh, the main handle has this cover on the front. It's the same for this other gun as well. It has the main handle there and the secondary handle towards the front. So those are going to work in basically the same way. The hands, you're just going to have to uh, switch the fingers to the uh, holding fingers. So just, I guess, taking a moment to talk about the hands. Uh, right now I've got closed fists on there. We do also have the holding hands, which are which is what we're going to need for holding the cannons. We do have trigger fingers, which we are not going to need for this kit because we don't have any like rifles or guns that need a trigger finger. So we actually don't need those at all. And then we have open hands. So all of these we have for both the left and the right hand. So you can use those in any way that you want. Both of the guns are also able to extend and forward and backwards. So uh, this one is kind of stiff, but as you can see, it's able to move forward and back. And that is basically uh, just going to depend on how you're using it. If you just got it stored, then you want it kind of around the midway, like I had it just a moment ago uh, when it was stored up. But when you want to use it like this, of course, you're going to want to extend it out. When you're going to want to combine the two of them together, then you have to kind of extend one and pull back the other one. So uh, we'll take a look at that momentarily. But right now, I want to just kind of get it into a nice pose because right now you're basically just looking at it uh, with me kind of fumbling around with it a whole lot. I'm sorry, it's kind of uh, not a very interesting or good looking review that I'm uh, doing for this kit, but it's kind of hard to manipulate all of this stuff. Uh, in a very pretty way in front of the camera for you guys. So anyway, I'll get it into a pose so it looks much better and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. I think that's probably much more eye-pleasing for you guys uh, not to have me fumbling around in front of the camera. But uh, so there we go. You can see that with a little bit of work, we can get it into a pretty awesome looking pose. 
firing those two huge cannons. Uh, they are a little slightly different in their type. Uh, I think uh, this one is just sort of like a normal beam cannon, and this one is more of like a shot kind of s spread cannon, although I'm not sure uh, what the technical names on those are. I'm sure someone is going to let me know in the comments below. Uh, so yeah, those are the two main cannons. As you can see, it is able to stand with both of those. I think it's probably going to look a lot better if you've got it up on an action base, of course, uh, but it is going to be able to stand if you just do a little bit of balancing to kind of uh, balance out the uh, a lot of weight pointing forward there with those two huge long barrels. Uh, the grips uh, is an underhand. I mean, you can do it either whichever way you want, but the way it shows to do it in the manual is to do an underhand grip. I think it definitely uh, does work slightly better that way. It looks a little bit odd at first, but I think it does definitely work much better, and that's the most important thing is that um, it's able to uh, work and do what it's supposed to do. So before we move on, and I put this into one more pose, combining the two of those together, I uh, just want to let you know that we are going to also have our action base connector for this, of course, and as well we have the uh, small little pilot figure of Dearka, and it's uh, looking pretty cool, just doing this kind of, um, this pose, whatever you'd call that pose, the yeah bros, we can do it pose. So uh, that's that if you wanted to paint this up, it's 1 100 scale, so not too bad to paint. Uh, it would look pretty cool once so that's all painted. So, uh, And that's it, otherwise, other than just the hands and then these uh, two things, that's really all you get extra other than what you get on, on the kit, so that's pretty cool. Um, to combine these cannons, before I do it, I'll just let you know that you can do it either way you want. If you want to have this one in the front and that one in the back, you can do that. Or if you want to have this one in the front and that one in the back, you can do that. Uh, it's basically any uh, way you want to do it. Basically what you have to do is you have to move one around to the back and move the other one, uh, extend the arm all the way out and bring it around to the front. And then just kind of plug them in uh, <coughs> and they uh, they fit into each other either way, so whichever way you want to do it, uh, they fit together and then you'll have to use one primary handle and one secondary handle to hold that big huge giant gun. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get it into that pose and then we'll finish up the review from there. Alright, one more thing first guys, as I was doing that, I thought I should show you this as it's kind of a testament to just how strong these arms are I was talking about. As you can see, I'm not actually holding the gun with the Gundam's hands at all, and both of those uh, giant guns are just being held up just by these uh, arms that are attaching, the mechanical arms that are attaching them to the side skirt armor. Of course, if I move it around in some way, they might kind of fall off to one side, but as you can tell here, they're standing up pretty well to holding that pose, so you don't even really have to hold those guns and those arms are just going to be strong enough to hold those. Alright, so I will admit it's not really the easiest thing to do to get uh, the cannons lined up exactly and the arms lined up exactly where you need them to be and the hands onto the handles and then uh, the fingers plugged into the handles and onto the hands. All of that is not really the easiest thing to do but once you've got it into a pose you have to admit it is going to look really awesome. So. I think when you've got a gun that is that long, let me go ahead and just stop this when it comes around here and I'll give you an actual measurement on how long that is once those are combined. That is going to come to a total of somewhere around 34, 33 centimeters uh, or it is going to be about 13 inches, so over a foot long in total for that. Uh, it's definitely impressive. There aren't going to be many guns in the 1100 scale that are going to measure that long. So, uh, all in all, I have to say this kit is really awesome. I'm totally pleased with it. It's definitely um, going to be a really, really nice kit. I'm looking forward to painting this and getting the duel and having them nicely posed up together. I think they're going to look really great. Uh, anyway, I'm not really sure what else I can really tell you guys about the kit. It's a really awesome Master Grade. It's got basically everything that you would expect for a Master Grade. Some really nice uh, part separation, uh, a great inner frame. It's got a lot of really awesome details on there, inside and out. And then, of course, it uh, has the stability and uh, able, uh, ability to uh, really utilize those, uh, basically the main gimmick of the kit, which is going to be the giant cannons. So whether you want to use them separately or together or just one and leave the other one uh, slung up on the backpack, however you want to do it, you're not really going to have any problems uh, with either balance issues, uh, weight or support issues. 
uh, especially once you've got up on an action base, you're going to really free up uh, all kinds of possibilities for posing. Of course, uh, when you have the two cannons combined, there aren't really a whole lot of poses that you can do with it just because of how you have to kind of arrange everything and like line up the arms and the mechanical arms and the cannons. Um, you are pretty limited in that sense uh, that uh, like doing a pose something similar like this is basically going to be the only thing that you can really do uh, with the two cannons together. Uh, but otherwise you do have a lot of options. Uh, so where we don't have a lot of accessories for this kit, that's made up for in the fact that we have uh, a lot of different options that you can do in terms of utilizing the weapons that are on the kit itself. So. Uh, I think that's just about it. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave those down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.